Mr. Speaker, this morning I rise to provide my honorable colleagues with an update on the government's commitment to reform the Bermuda public school system. Mr. Speaker, the overarching drive to the government's 2020 election commitment to reform education is developing and ensuring high quality and equitable education for all of Bermuda's children. This must be the priority of everyone. We must put in place a revived, recalibrated, and repurposed education system having a foundation that can bear the test of time for future generations. That is for our children, our children's children, and their children in all, in that all students, no matter how they learn, they are educated to lead personally and professionally, compete locally, and contribute globally. Our children must be positioned for success. Mr. Speaker, the current education system is not serving our children or our educators at the highest level of excellence which they deserve. Our public schools must be places where students are put first and educators are valued. Our schools must be places where students not only learn, but they also feel safe to express themselves, to take risks, to pursue their interests, and maximize their potential. Our students must be challenged to be innovative, dynamic, critical thinkers, entrepreneurs, and intellectuals. Our educators must be equipped with ample teaching tools to help them deliver an education curriculum with creativity, with passion, and create a positive learning environment. Mr. Speaker, I'm sure my honorable colleagues in the House this morning will agree with me that a shift is needed in our public education system. We must do things differently for our children and the future of this island. We cannot continue to do the same thing over and over and expect a different result as we know where that leads to. This is not the direction we will travel. The time is now, Mr. Speaker. Change is inevitable, and change is forthcoming for our public school system. Mr. Speaker, with this in mind, the work needed to bring this kind of change to fruition for the benefit of our students and our educators will be both impactful and wide-reaching. So this morning, I provide my honorable colleagues with an update on four initiatives of education reform change that are either in train or about to start. One, the development of an education authority. Two, the implementation of the Learning First program. Three, the phasing out of middle schools and introduction of signature schools. And four, a consultation process with the introduction of parish primary schools. Mr. Speaker, let me start with the education authority development and what has happened to date. A committee consisting of the chairman and deputy chair of the Board of Education, members from the Bermuda First Education Committee, and our Education Consultants Innovation Unit have been hard at work on this initiative. As outlined in the 2020 election platform, in keeping with a recommendation from Bermuda First and with the support of the Bermuda Union of Teachers and the Bermuda Public Service Union, an authority for public education, which will strengthen the performance management of all schools and persons in the administrative, classroom, and student support levels within the Department of Education is being developed. This team has been working diligently, looking at several options, and will continue to work on the authority to ensure that our schools and the new system will run efficiently, effectively, and to the highest possible standards. Mr. Speaker, I will discuss, I will now discuss the implementation of the Learning First program. I remind this honorable house that one of the government's 2020 platform initiatives for education reform is implementing the Learning First program which involves a wide range of stakeholders, that is, educators, school leaders, parents, business persons, unions, cultural and community partners collaboratively working together to design an improved learning environment for public schools. In preparation for launching this program, the Learning First website, www.learningfirstbba.com, was established in August to gauge interest from our educators give them some insight of what the program entailed, and encourage their participation. During mid-October, the Learning First governance team released advertisements via print media, email, and social media platforms inviting the general public to visit the website 
and complete an expression of interest in becoming part of the school design teams. The application process was intentional to secure persons who not only had an interest in public school education, but, could, but who could also contribute at a high level and lend value to the design of improved learning. Mr. Speaker, there is a genuine hunger in our community to see change in public school education. The response to the advertisement to participate in this program was overwhelming with 175 expressions of interest received and just under 90 applications sent in. From this, we now have a design team of close to 60 persons with a diversity of knowledge, skills, and technical abilities working on the new vision for public school learning. Due to the overwhelming response, follow-up with the remaining applicants was undertaken to advise them that there will be several opportunities forthcoming where they can participate in the Learning First program. Mr. Speaker, the execution of the Learning First program design team members officially commenced the week of October 19th, steered by the Ministry of Education's governance team and a team of four education consultants from Innovation Unit who are on island. Mr. Speaker, I remind my honorable colleagues and the general public that in March this year, I announced that the ministry had contracted with the consultant firm Innovation Unit Limited, who had a proven track record of more than 15 years' experience co-designing processes and methodologies for education systems. At the same time, I also shared that we'll be taking ownership of transforming our public school system, and the future education system will be designed by Bermudians by a consultation with local stakeholder groups. The consultants were hired to guide us through this change management process based on their extensive experience in designing education systems. Mr. Speaker, as I earlier shared, the Learning First program now comprises of a design team of 54 persons with a diversity of knowledge, skills, and technical abilities working on the new vision for public school learning. They will be steered by the ministry's technical officers on the governance team and guided by the consultants as we navigate change in public education. The design team has been busy at work during the past two months engaged in meetings that include an introduction to digital reporting processes, identifying national and core education priorities, understanding and building on public school case for change, understanding what design thinking, changing mindsets to design new solutions for redesigning the public school system, how to deliver better outcomes for learners, and using research to inform the school design process. The objective of the work is to prepare support for effective delivery of new learning experiences for our students. Mr. Speaker, change is forthcoming. The design team will ultimately be the mentors and champions for designing of learning in the public school system. Mr. Speaker, during the month of November, the design team undertook a 360-degree assessment of the public school system from the perspective of relevant stakeholders and community members, that is, those who know it best. The team members conducted surveys of students, teachers, principals, school leaders, and businesses. This research was critical to gain to gather key data about their experiences with public school education, such as what is working well, challenges encountered, improvements needed for the system, parental engagement, community and business engagement, most significant learning experiences, and more. This data will drive the required mindsets for informed decision-making during the design of system learning. Mr. Speaker, all of our stakeholders have been kept abreast of the objectives and specific work of Learning First program from the start. Two half-day professional development sessions were held with our teachers on October 27th at the 37th Annual Conference of the Bermuda Union of Teachers. The first session focused on Learning First, glimpses of the future, where examples were shared of schools and systems around the world tackling similar challenges as our public school system. The second session covered Learning First, Think Like a Designer, which entailed an introduction to innovative mindsets, user research, prototyping, and the importance of designing for authentic learning. I'm happy to announce that the first monthly newsletter from Learning First will be sent later today, and I urge the public to visit their website at www.learningfirstbda.com to sign up by hitting the, the subscribe button. Mr. Speaker, a stream of information meetings about Learning First were held with the Department of Education staff, school principals, the Board of Education Executive, directors of the National Education Institute, 
and the career development team in the Department of Workforce Development and various other organizations. The organizations, businesses, and partners to underscore the national importance of education reform and the role they play. Mr. Speaker, I will now speak to the initiative of education reform change. In 2017, again and again in 2020, the government election platform pledged to phase out middle schools and introduce a two-tier system of education that will have primary schools and signature schools at the secondary level. The signature schools will focus on the learning styles and interests of our children, including academic and technical trades, subjects, trades, business, sports, arts, and special needs education. Mr. Speaker, let me first say that as stated in the 2020 speech from the throne, the government will bring forth a bill to amend the Education Act to support the decision to phase out middle schools, introduce signature schools, and move from a three-tier to a two-tier public education system. The legislation will phase out middle school education, amend the age range for primary school education to 12 years, which includes the current M1 and M2 years. Introduce signature level, introduce signature, senior, senior level signature school education and amend this age to start at 13 years to include the current M3 year and establish exceptionalities and alternative education for students. Therefore, primary school will extend from P1 to P8 and senior school education will be from S1 to S5. Mr. Speaker, it was anticipated that the first two signature schools would be implemented in September 2021. However, we recognize that more time is needed to collect the data to determine the right signatures. The Learning First program continues to undertake this research. Upon completion of gathering the data, there will be a need to do consultation on the signature foci. The intention to, dis to consult and engage has been further delayed to COVID-19 Unfortunately, as officers were needed to deal with the COVID-19 matters that have arisen at our schools. Mr. Speaker, changing decades-old school systems does not happen overnight. We intend to reform education equitably and methodically to ensure success for all. We will take our time, measure once, twice, or as many times as needed to get this right. Therefore, to lay the firm foundations and enable the widest possible consultation and engagement with teachers, parents, young people, and the wider public, ensuring a smooth transition, we will start phasing out middle schools and opening signature schools in September 2022. Mr. Speaker, change is forthcoming, but it is important not to rush this change and to get it right the first time. It is critical that we trial, test, and refine what signature schools will look like and focus on with input from educators, students, families, and the public. In early 2021, the ministry will undertake a separate consultation process regarding the specialization, specializations of each signature school. This is to ensure that the interested and affected persons have the opportunity to share their views on the signature opportunities. The signatures will be proposed on the basis of local and international research, including local and global trends currently being undertaken by the Learning First design team. On September 2021, the school design teams will design key features of the signature schools which will provide sufficient lead time to September 2022 to carefully implement these new signatures and for teachers to have the necessary professional learning to deliver the signatures at a high and consistent quality. As signature schools open, middle schools will be phased out. Mr. Speaker, lastly, the initiative of education reform will involve the structural realignment that is necessary for our system. It is the launch of a consultation, consultative process on the proposals for parish primary schools. Redesigned public primary schools will expand courses and program offerings to provide students with the range of educational experiences and services that meet international standards. Mr. Speaker, the vision is that each primary school will become the hub of its parish with parents, surrounding neighborhoods and community organizations, rallying around schools, supporting educational programs and initiatives. This will create strong, authentic partnerships to help schools transform into places that are relevant to the needs of 21st century learners. We are confident and research shows that when families, community groups, businesses, and schools band together to support learning, 
Students achieve more in school and they enjoy their educational experience. The parish school model will facilitate a stronger and more resilient connection among students, families, and communities. Mr. Speaker, during the consultative process, the government will propose 10 primary schools, one per parish, with two schools in Pembroke Parish. The maximum enrollment for each primary school will be 300 students, with the intended class size of 15 students per class. We intend to continue to co-locate preschools onto primary school sites and will consider eventually merging preschools into primary schools. The class size for preschools will remain at the same remain the same at 10 students per class. Mr. Speaker, let me emphasize that the fewer number of primary schools will facilitate the government delivering 21st century real-world and authentic learning facilities that are modern and which support the transformative teaching and learning practices. We envision our primary schools will have instructional classrooms that are open spaces and adaptable to any type of learning style with appropriate air quality and lighting systems. These include purpose-built labs or rooms for ICT, family studies, STEAM education, and foreign languages, art, music, dance, and drama rooms, parent resource rooms, library resource centers, and cafeterias and mini auditoriums. Mr. Speaker, our children deserve these types of 21st century learning facilities. With a smaller number of primary schools, capital funds can be better utilized and reinvested for modernizing and refurbishing specific buildings that can support the delivery of 21st century education. Mr. Speaker, I presented a broad overview of the school consultation process. We understand that change will be difficult. However, the ministry is committed to engaging all of our stakeholders and the general public to provide them with the opportunity to inform the change that is needed in our public school system. The consultation document will be launched in the coming days and placed on the ministry's website for public access. The dates of public consultation meetings will be shared in the new year. Mr. Speaker, let me close by saying that the change for public education in Bermuda is long overdue. The transformative work started with the execution of several strategies in the Strategic Plan for Public Education, Plan 2022, that the public designed, desired of our system. We commit to continue the transformative work. We recognize that all of us can be challenged with change, especially change to a system that has been in place for decades. However, I strongly believe that we should remain focused on the why of the change, the vision. We want to position our children for generations to come to lead personally and professionally and to complete locally and contribute globally. They are our future leaders of Bermuda, and we are dedicated to seeing them achieve all of their educational needs. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.